Okay, sige na nga, isala na nga natin. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> but I did not, uh, I did not, um, I, I still retain the why, the yet ko. Sabi ko nga, my parents released me, not my husband. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but it's a party, you know? I love every month, so there's my mom, my dad, and my husband. Oh, diba? It's a party every time. There. Um, like I said, I have, after college, I went back to Northern Samar, so I really feel that as, as a scholar ng bayan, I was able to serve the country. Alam mo yung calling that serve, serve the country. So I never worked in Metro Manila until six years ago in the evening. So I really served Northern Samar, my hometown, as a teacher, as an instructor, as a community organizer in the rural areas of Northern Samar. Okay? What else? I teach qualitative research. Research. Mahira, okay? When I saw my mom teaching research, I remember many times telling myself, I will never be like her. I, of all things, my God, research. Ano ba yan, di ba? Talagang, so I, 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 I remember telling myself, I will never be a teacher, and I will never be a teacher of research. Now I am teaching exactly the same thing. Ang buhay nga naman. But you know, every time I feel I'm not really confident in it, I, I, I remind myself, I teach what I myself need to learn. Okay, so I'm not really the expert. I am a student while teaching it. So this is what I teach in the undergrad, in the MA, and in the PhD. It's a very difficult subject matter. But for the MA students, they go to you because research is needed everywhere. Nothing moves without research. So, balik ka nga, mag-aral ko ulit para alam mo talaga natin, hindi, hindi pwede mga papetik-spetik sa pahulang-hula lang solusyon sa problema dito. Kailangan natin evidence-based. So, they go back to school to study research. Okay, so research is so not sexy. So talagang back-tumbling ako niyan, speak-speak pang ganyan, kulang na lang kumain ng apoy. And just imagine teaching research to 18-year-olds, to, 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 to very young, to very young students, who, ah, lagi ako nang sasurve at the beginning of the semester. Guys, what do you want to become when you grow up? What kind of job do you envision yourselves, you know, having in the future? Nine out of ten, they will say, you know what, you know what, prof? And then like, I know that. <laughs> so this is the quality of students we have. I really like to travel, you know. I, I really like to I really like to uh, be a foodie, you know, a professional YouTuber, and I want to get paid for it. And I really just want to travel. <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> Nobody really tells me, you know, I want, I want to see the whales. I want to, uh, to launch a zero waste movement. You know, I just want to enjoy and get paid for it. Okay. What else? The students that we have right now have very short attention span. But that's okay. But my greatest heartache is young people who no longer know how to tell stories, who do not remember things, who do not know anecdotes, who do not even know how to tell a joke. They begin with, if they're going to tell a joke, right? They begin with, you know what? This is so funny. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. You never start a joke. You know, this is so funny, guys. This is so funny, you know? They will tell, they will attempt to tell a story. You know what, last Saturday, we went to Malate, and it was, it was this street in Malate, it was like, um, this, this, that, it was a street, it was, it was a very small street, you know, it was like, let's say you, you Google it, you Google it, it's like a very big street. And then, I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And then, we went to this restaurant, and the restaurant was like, in the tradition of Jonathan Jude Y. Baldo. I have to 
remain remember it. I have to remember the dates, the exact facial expression for me to convey a story. Right? So I will have to remember. My, this is my this is a part of my spiel, but I will tell it anyway. One of the greatest legacies of my brother here is when he asked me to memorize a thing. Just in case I get trapped in a UP class, ask my professor, and I don't know the answer to whatever question it would be. So when I pass the OCAT, isisigit ko kaya Jojo. When I pass the OCAT, he told me, in time, you remember this. I still know it by heart. So the line is this. There really is no metaphysical parlance in the jargon of ontology because as far as my political knowledge according to Professor Polodetti, we really cannot recover ties according to Father Rickford in this eschatological futuristic look of the future. And as far as my virginal knowledge of Andromeda is concerned, according to the much according to the much vaunted science of Manila today, the captain of the ship is by all means the captain of the boat. <laughs> Just in case, you know, magkagipitan sa buhay. And I was about to graduate. I was in my last semester. I couldn't, and I was tired. I was doing pieces. I was always sleepless. So I, 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 I slept in class. And it so happened that the professor saw me sleeping. He called me and asked me this mega domain of all questions. I'm like, like the human genome project and the ethical implication of the humans of <laughs> Okay. So, okay, you, girl, the reason here. I will ask you a question. If I, you do not satisfy me, I will give you a five minutes you've been sleeping like the entire time. So he asked me something, and then, oh my God, this was my moment. <laughs> so I stood up, and then, this was my moment, and I invoked the British accent. I don't know why, but at that time, I invoked the British accent, and I was saying, well, thank you, doctor, blah, 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 for that question, but, you know, I really think there really is some metaphysical problems in the target of the problem. And as far as my political knowledge of concern, according to Professor Pollard, I think we really cannot break up for Tyson, this is pathological, as well as the problem. Point is, many students are no longer at that thing. They do not remember things, they do not, they cannot sustain, like, a very tedious job. So since research is such a difficult thing to do, just imagine what I'm going through, okay? So these are the two difficult concepts to sell because it's qualitative communication research. So I am trying to tell them another popular model of communication. Second is I am teaching them how to do research, not just market research, but scholarly research. Yung research na tipatisis talaga. Tama ba? Tapos pag ano, pag ano sila, pag ano sila sa buhay, how do I get this shit to them? Sino mga nagtitisis dito? <laughs> okay. So, my confidence really in is I'm inviting my students to a sophistication of the mind. Gawagawa ko lang po, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, ano ba yung nasa syllabus yan? of the mind for me is really just going beyond the pros and cons of black and white, but always looking for the third opinion. It is a marriage of both, you know. We always have a problem in the argumentative culture where we are placed in the middle of the binaries, the Republicans, the Democrats, and the don't want to put high. But you know what? Each side has its own beauty. So the sophistication of the mind for me is going for the third opinion. I refuse to be caught in an argument. I always go for the sophistication of the mind. And then, of course, another gawagawa in dente dento, deepening of the ecology of the heart. So even if I am teaching the mind, I really want their hearts to explode in a very cerebral mental institution, <laughs> such as Yuki de Leman. Okay? So, okay, so what do I tell them? What is this thing called a popular model of communication? Okay, so for example, when you're in college of mass communication, you're a graduate in broadcast communication, you're going to be able to sit down. Not really, you know. Uh, I opened my mouth in, on my third year in college because I was not great speaking English. And so, you're going to be able to sit down. You're going to be able to sit down. You're going to be able to sit How hard it tries to hide the biggest factor. My brother is a right speaker, and so am I. So I opened my mouth in third year in college because I was not speaking in an opera-like manner. And like my classmates were like, did you call it a regional regional? 
ko sa waray pa nagdadalunod na nagdadalunod na ito. Uh, okay? So, no! You know, so, so we were told that communication is ideally intentional, so we attend communication seminars, right? In order for us to persuade, communicate, and so on and so forth. When we attend weddings, for instance, one of the popular suggestions from Ninos and Ninos, in order for your marriage to work, you have to communicate, right? Right? Communication is key. Do not really go to bed without, you know, uh, you know, uh, talking to one another. There are self-help books and communication, right? According to, you know, marriage, self-help books, you say, do not say, you hurt me, you say, I feel hurt. Ala. But come on, we have so many instances in life when we're in the middle of a communication moment where it is just so nasty and so confused and so confusing. You open your mouth, your mother backs the table and she walks out. Not my mother particularly, you know, perhaps other mothers. Okay? Pero yung gano, right? Away sa jowa, away sa kapatid. These are communication moments, right? That are just so human, okay? So, my favorite thing about, quote about communication, communication can sometimes be about rearranging the furniture. You know, no talking. You go back to your own cocoon. You rearrange the furniture. You bring out the linens, the cloths. You rearrange them. The, the tools in the toolbox. You put them back in again. And then suddenly, or you play the piano, or you dance, or you stare at the moon. And then when you go back to your husband, to your boyfriend, to your mother, actually, okay now. So sometimes, communication is not always intentional. And it is not always because you are verbally talented. Okay? It is really going back to yourself. Another favorite communication is, you know, good communication is as stimulating as black coffee and as a, just as hard to sleep after, okay? I have four brothers, okay, all of them brilliant, but I will just say excuse to my two brothers here. Kaya Jojo and Managing. My favorite brother is the fourth brother. Ah! Alam mong sinabi talaga. Okay. My favorite brother is Managing. She is part of the events. Okay. Why is he my favorite brother? This is my first confession now. So, this is new to them. Okay. So, he's my favorite brother because when I go to him, he doesn't know how to advise me. Unlike Kuya Jojo and Manong Jay and my other brother, when I go to Manong Jay and Kuya Jojo, they are asking for advice. They would bring me the SWOT analysis spreadsheet, advantages, strengths, threats. Manong Jay, because he's an entrepreneur who was in plan A, plan B, you know, I say you go to contingency plan C, because just in case, just in case, and they okay, thank you for the advice, I will follow plan C. Okay, they're very clear, they're very, they're verbally astute. But my fourth brother, Manuji, he's not like that, okay? But he's like coffee, because I would spend hours with him, and at the end of these hours, I would end up actually like I have been lifted off my feet. It is a good conversations with him, it's about, you know, music, the Beatles, God, ah, uh, bonsai, and just, senseless, but it is always soulful. It is always, you know, we fight over Rodrigo Donerte because we are from different sides of the argument. Uh, and there's coffee and there's, you know, keto diet and so on and so forth. But see, if we look at communication books, he is not that communicator. He is not something with a direction, but conversations with him is always so okay. But if you ask him, he's always insecure about the way he is able to communicate. But he is the, the kind of person who can sustain conversations up to four in the morning without being philosophical about it, without being intelligent about it, without being clear about the plans of the world. He can even confuse you sometimes. <laughs> Have you seen my brother managing? He's very low key and very okay. So there. So, but it's you know I love talking with him, you know, sitting with him. So because the likes of Pastor Jojo, 
really is the classic communicator. The one, you know, I think you've seen this model, you know, there's the source, there's the receiver, and you just know how to communicate. And I am in awe when I am in front, when I am there, and Pastor Jojo is here, para. Para sa mga kami ng ginagawa niya. Para mo galing-galing niya. Diba? Para sa kami ng, you know, hangi na nalangkap sa Northern Samar. Because my brother is a good, you know, public speaker, good communicator. But see, it, it's not for everyone. This talent, this is not a gift from God that is for him. And we forget, and so, because I don't want to speak like that, I intend to, I'm not a good communicator. So let me give you another model of communication. The model of this one. This one is, communication is meaning making. My meaning is your meaning. And because we are frail, you know, we change our mind as human beings, Okay, na actually, kung mag-overlap man lang yan, communication occurs in that small overlap. What is the implication of this? The implication really is that, I like the transmission model, <laughs> the transmission model, if, if you look at the verbs, these are imparting, sending, transmitting, right? From the, the sender, the receiver, right? And good communication is, what I send out to you, you get it. Because the metaphor is really the train. If you remember, we have Department of Transportation and Communication, right? Because that day, telegrama, ibibigay mo sa train, pupunta sa next town. Communication. So, parting, sending, receiving. My favorite model of communication is communication as culture. This is, if you, if you notice, the verbs are different. The verbs are sharing, participation, fellowship, common thing, commonness. And the metaphor is a ceremony. Did I pronounce it, did, did I syllabicate it correctly? <laughs> is it ceremony, 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 see? My English teacher was at the Rose Mother. Ceremony, okay. The ceremony is, I will tell you, why do you go to church? Why do you go to church? Okay? It is, you may say, kasi ang galing ng pastor eh. Right? The reason, the sender is the pastor, a good public speaker. Ang galing niya talaga, ang galing niya more. Ang galing niya talaga, ang galing niya. So come to think of it, it's not just the pastor that makes you go to church. The ceremony is meaningful because of each other's participation. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you are not even as active as you, you would want to be, right? Sometimes because you're, you're sleepless, you're just here. But the ceremony, it is meaningful because of each other's participation. Okay? So I am from Northern Samar. You know, we have this small Catholic uh, church there. You know what? Every time I go there, I will be so frustrated with the choir. You know, my Catholic church is choir, right? Like, but you know, because at the end of it, there is meaning because I see the old people there. It's 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 the participation. You go to a what one of the favorite uh, Easter Sunday places that we go to, the Mount Banao, right? The Mount Banao of for all you know beliefs is sacred. It's considered sacred. Who makes it sacred? Who is the sender? Who is the receiver? No, it is everybody's participation. Have you gone to Mount Pilano on the Holy Week? To your right are the mountain climbers, to your left are the new agers, to your back are the Rizalistas, to your front are the crazy tourists who make the place dirty. But you can still feel it. You can still feel that it is somehow sacred because of the meaning making that each participant makes. Are you getting this thing called communication? So it is your value in a group, whether or not you speak without your head, it is your presence, it is your participation. Ganito ko tayo ako magturo. Kaya pag alas 4, wala na pa ako energy. Naibuhos ko na lahat. Okay. So communication using this model is really not about that one persuasive speaker. It is not about 
You know, creating that one video that is so good, that advertisement that is so good, it is really about the quality of participation. It is about this. It is community building, creation of tradition, weaving of stories that bind. Nothing binds meanings, you know, the way stories do. When we sit together, when we converse, when we talk about our lives, not the lives of people in YouTube, we are bound by these stories. We participate. And whether or not we stutter, whether or not we're eloquent, because we have poured it out, we are good community members. We are like Madam Jim, who lifts us, who lifts me off my feet every time. Are you with me? Thank you very much. Let me skip that because time check. Okay, another difficult, so communication. This is even more difficult. Qualitative research. It is scientific, it is methodical, it is step by step, it is rigorous. It is evidence-based, empirical. So how do I make it manageable to young minds? I use metaphors. So when we say qualitative research, there are no numbers. So I am not a statistician. There are no, well, I am, okay? But it is considered scientific. So my favorite metaphor is that, look, sabi ko counterflow. If quantitative research is for generalizability, right? So the SW survey, for instance, but to generalize some findings because you have samples, right? Qualitative research is not like that. Even if you study one person, one family, that family's truth is true. Do we need to generalize it? No. But it is true for that one family, for that one community, for that one person. Okay. So, I always compare quality as growth. So if quantitative research is for numbers, qualitative research is for focus so that we can deepen. So I, I, I tell my students, students think of quality as not a heroic upward movement, right? When we think of growth, but when we think a tree, right? It grows upward, it achieves, it reaches for the sky, branching out to the sun, accomplishment, right? My other model, because I'm always comfortable, is an equally important concept of growth, which is downward. I live, you know, I, 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 I grew up in Northern Summer Typhoon Belt. I know that even the biggest, the sturdiest tree, it, it's, it may still be the first one to tumble upon a strong typhoon if its root system is not deep and wide. So what is, what's the equivalent of this whole downward movement? This is the thing we don't like. This is the thing we would like to avoid, okay? So quality as growth, the first element is deepening. It's qualitative research. Magpalayan tayo. It is staying up with the mess. It is thinking that there is no contingency plan. That there is no Mars to go to if this Earth explodes. It is staying in your locality. Do we not wonder why the ones who invite for commencement as commencement speakers are the ones who have flown away? Do we not wonder? Do we not question that? In Qatar mind, for instance, you don't know guest speaker for graduation. You umalis, right? You pumunta New York, you pumunta Metro Manila. We never really see the insights of the ones who deepened in the place, the ones who stayed rooted, the barangay captain who has native intelligence, who knows every nook and cranny of the place, who knows when this person had her first tregla and was this is going through a, you know problems in marriage, who whose child has school to and all, right? That person, because that person deepened knows has native intelligence. So what are the other the other elements of 
of dignity. It's really staying with the mess, going inside. You know, when we have problems with relationships, just be like, you know what, girl, but parlor ka lang. Move on ka na, right? It's a soulful downward movement. You talaga achieve. You know, break free. But this one, pag ang alam mo sa rili mo, look inside. Go inside. Deepen. Ayaw natin yan, right? Ayaw natin yan. Mahirap. But this is very important in growth. This is quality that I am teaching. You have to go deep. So my example of a picture here is this thing. Because being alone is one of the allergens of young people. Okay? They don't want to be alone because it's just too, too quiet and too noisy at the same time. But I encourage my students to be an effective qualitative researcher. You have to know, to listen to that voice. And you have to be, be comfortable be spending time alone without the paraphernalia of a cell phone. Go to a restaurant and eat and look at people. Do not even pretend to read a book. Go to the movies and do it alone and watch people. You know, watch people make fools of themselves. Okay? So that's my favorite, you know, being alone. What about develop the interior self? Listen to music, dance without an occasion, deepen. Another lecture, talaga, another aspect of growth as a soulful downward movement is intensification. I am a very intense person as you can see, right? Intensification. Because intensity is what makes an art beautiful. If you see an artwork, you see it because it is not prefabricated, it is not manufactured for general consumption. But you can see the saliva, the blood, the puyat, the powis of the artwork because it is so intense, right? But young people, when they look for information, they don't want the intense information, the long information, right? Ayaw na, di ba? Kasi ay gusto yung condensed, yung bulleted, yung seven ways to be happy. Oh, seven ways lang, not eight, seven. Okay, 13 ways to reach for your goals in 2020. Oh, palagi nga yan, bulleted, bus speed, right? So, kasi pag binabasa ko, yung haba naman, napaka-intense naman. But you know an intense experience. You read a novel, there is that page there where you are stuck because it is so intense, you cannot even flip to the next page. What do you do? You kind of pause it and then you drink water. This is so intense, right? This is so intense. And then, this is so intense, right? That is, that, is, that is how intense it is. You can flip it, but it is so intense that it makes you again elevate. And young people, young people, my students particularly, natapakot, napaka-intense, masyado, you know, masyado ng chill. Because I really just want to travel. <laughs> Alam mo, yung gusto, gusto kong isudyante, yung mumangang, yung gumagana, yung parang hindi niya naitig yan. Yun ang gusto ko, yun ang intense. Yun hindi niya talaga naitig yan, yung talagang nagkakabog talaga, natapos na, do you understand? Do you understand, class? Eh, hindi po, mama. <laughs> hindi po, wala po kasi din sa amin sa aklan eh. Diba? But the ones who just like chill, eh, yeah. Do you have questions? Eh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the intense, the confused. Alam mo yun, parang nawawala ako. <laughs> Intensity. Okay. Like me. Okay. So what is, do I have a picture here? Okay, this one is, you know, nung bago pa nauso itong mga cafe na may mga library, this is a one cafe in London who is so intense. Lahat ng creativity niya binuso isang cafe. And many people are suggesting, you know what, why don't you branch out? Magpa-franchise ka. Sabi ng may ari, you know what, I want this place to be so intense that I don't want to replicate it. Right? Ngayon, we want to franchise, you know. You see, there is no peculiarity of place anymore because you want, you go to Bicol, you go to Sagada, you see the same thing. You see the 7-Eleven, the Chow Cake, the Chow Lady. There is no intense brand that just deepens in one place and whose owner just gives it all to that one intense, beautiful, quaint place. Except for this halo-halo, ethereal vibe, where it is still intense, 
and you go there, the owner, despite the pressure to branch out, is still there, intensely rooted. You find that they, it has no day. They go to the TV and say, Asa po yung halo-halo mo pakasalap? And people will point to them. So see, a different aspect of growth, intensity. This one is my favorite. Quality or growth as shedding. Masakit. Sabi nga nila, shit happens. This is renewal. This is divorce in the family, cancer, death. Being demoted, being swamped by the you know, being swept up by the Yolanda typhoon, being in a refugee camp. This is having that, you know, hair hair fall problem. When you are shedding you're like a crustacean, you are vulnerable. Even if you are a python, when you are shedding, you will pause, you will be vulnerable, but out of this shedding you will grow. So this one we don't like. This is not getting the job you like. This is, you know, your groom changing his mind the last minute when everything was ready. That is that shedding, okay? Shedding is like being pulled, being pulled to this one direction. You are planning to go left, but you go right anyway because there is, you are being proven wrong by God, by life. This one is another concept of growth that I teach through qualitative research. Repetition. Parang gas-gas na the practice makes perfect, right? But all good relationships, you know, grow out of repetition. The rituals. My favorite word, this is such a beautiful word, tending. What do you tend to? You tend to a garden. You tend to an altar. You tend to a plant, right? You tend to a dog, right? It is repetitive. And I would like to say, life is round like a woman because all of it is a cycle. You become a mother, it is cyclical. Pagkain, magluluto ka, maghuhugas, maglalaba, ayan na naman, gutom na naman sila, right? Pagod ka na naman, magpaplansya ka na naman, ayan na naman, ayan na naman, ay, katakain na naman, ano ba kakainin ko, okay, ayan naman, magluluto ka na naman, magbubos ka na naman, ilabahin na naman, ayan na naman, ayan na naman, ayan na naman, right? Build the relationship. It's building rituals. The the mama chuk-chuk greetings in the morning, right? And it ends with the mama chuk-chuk when you are in a long distance relationship. It's not the one-time, big-time surprises. It's not the one, the show love. Good relationships, soulful, godly relationships are built on very difficult, ordinary, ordinary everydayness of cooking, of serving food at the table, and diba? tending. Sabi nga, there will be no garden without a gardener. Otherwise, it will be a forest. Somebody tends, that's why we are drawn to gardens because we know that there is a person there caught up in a repetitive cycle of life. When you take care of dogs, right? And poo na naman yan. So, young people, qualitative research, paulit ulit ang interpretation ng analysis. Balik ka sa data mo, nakakapagod. Pero pag kinikembot kang ganire, medyo kumakagat sila. Are you still with me, my friends? Yes. Oh, lang to. Okay, so repetition as quality. You know, it is not hurrying up, it is really. So, my, I think I have a picture here. This is a picture of, I think, Carpintero, or the ones, the people behind beautiful things, the craftsmen, right? If you notice the weavers, the weavers, these are very repetitive. Pwede mong sabihin, not the highly skilled, blue collar ka. People behind five-star hotels, right? The ones who make the bed sheets shiny and clean. These are the ones, these are the people who go through very repetitive tasks. Repetition. So when you, you know, I teach my kids, it's just, gano'n lang, gano'n lang, mami naman kasi ang gulo na naman ulit eh. Tulog na ba lang din yung sabili, maglilis ng bahay pa pa'y tayo. Ang amin naman kasi, magbubulog din naman. Ganun talaga. 
paulit-ulit lang. Tulong po maghugas ng mga platito. Kasi naman, ganun talaga. <laughs> Paulit-ulit, if life really piles up, right? The grass grow when the dust settles and it gets dirty. So, so may mga lumalabas. Children who are taught house chores make it through life. Because they understand the repetitiveness of order and disorder. Ganun yun. Ganun talaga. Gugulo at gugulo. Kaya mo nilinisin na naman. Okay. So maybe I have confused you already. <laughs> but maybe I have engaged you also. So that is my style of teaching. But of course, in class, I am more... There are workshops, there are activities. I, I, I listen to them. But because I teach qualitative research, you know, unconsciously, they end up telling me their lives. They end up telling me, you know, accidentally. It is, not, it is never a hard sell. Come on, tell me about what you're going through. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your struggles in UP. It's never, I am never on your face. But through activities, assignments, workshop, they are able to tell these stories. And since there are no cell phones inside the classroom, they are forced now to tell their own stories. My challenge always, do you know how to tell a story? Do you know how to complete it from beginning, middle, and end, where there is like a climax and a resolution? I challenge you, go back to that art of telling it with a period where you remember the names of places where there is a punchline, where you remember the joke that was told to you. So this is what I teach, the literal subject matter, the focused systematic analysis of qualitative data. So when I say qualitative data, these are pages of transcripts, pages of photographs, because we analyze photographs, you know, files, volumes of video clips. But otherwise, other than that, I am also teaching them about communicating, engaging, when they are doing group work, they are in circle, they are looking their classmates in the eye, they are exchanging saliva and sweat. Okay? Which is a miracle unto itself. For young people to sit together for three hours without cell phones, without Google. Okay? That is a miracle. These things give me confidence. I teach them this. But when I see them engaging, asking questions about human nature, finding answers, why are families, you know, breaking apart and finding answers through a semester worth of research, and they say, "No, I know." And what is the knowledge? It is not. Uh, it, it is not a discovery that is, you know, about like discovering the one. It is just discovering something that they already know. And at the end of the semester, the qualitative research students, you know what? They are more in love with humanity. They are more forgiving of our frailties because of qualitative research. They understand why menopausal moms are like this. Okay? They understand that an open door really communicates a lot more than a verbal welcome. Meron pag-aaral ng organizations? Ang laging bagay pala, the moment that the boss opens the door, you know, it's a change in, in, in power, a change in hierarchy. These are the things that give me confidence. I give it my all for three hours. Usually my classes are from one to four o'clock, four o'clock online. So thank you very much. I hope I have played with your minds today about communication, that it is not about just going speaking, but it is carrying your stories.
even if it is just as simple as an appendectomy. I have one student, I've had an appendectomy, come on, tell it. Tell it like it's an epic event in your life. Do not begin with, you know, I'm so sorry, this is so boring. This is really just about my appendectomy. Okay, begin with, ano? Nagkumahala ako ng visual. Pero grabe, sumakit bigla. Tapos, wala akong jeep na makuha. Diba? So, it, it became like an emblematic, epic story. And people were like, huh? Grabe. <laughs> because they forgot that their stories, however ordinary, are stories worth telling. It need not always be about Justin Bieber. It need not always be about the, you know, celebrities out there. So that's communication. And number two is that quality is not always about reaching for the big things. It's not always taking those to-do checklists. It's really deepening, intensifying, repetition, right? Difficult tasks, but necessary for the soul. I think I'm done for this afternoon. I will welcome your questions later. But I'm